Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today in the automotive history, we have Alan Travis, our historian, friend to the channel. Alan, what year, make, and model is this one? This is a 1909 Delage Voiturette two-liter category race car uh, designed and built by Edward Below back in the time. Let's take a look at our featured attraction. Now, when he talks about a race car, we got to kind of put our mind together on this because you step just a little bit that way, thank you. First of all, even the headlights look thinner for racing. Tell us about this one. Well, this is a very light car, almost all aluminum. The body is cast aluminum. Uh, the Voiturette race car had lots of features that were different than any other uh, cars at the time. They had, um, they were dry sumped. What you're pointing at now is the self-generating carbide lamps that use water and and carbide to create acetylene. So those would last about six hours with the right amount of water. Gives crank start car like the cars were at the time. Yeah, look at that. And then the Delage. This Delage is made airplane engines at the time. So that's, that's really the type of engines they made in 1909, 1910. So that's what they made and used as their radiator ornament. It's a real ornament. That keeps you cool out here too in it the sure desert. It does. <laughs> this is a, again, a Voiturette race car and some of the special tests, they did reliability runs. So notice there's no hinge in the hood oh, yeah. because they would, they would lock the hood so you couldn't raise it, but you gained a little bit of access through the sides. Mm -hmm. They didn't want you to replacing any parts in the races. The, up here you find uh, fuel and you find oil. It's a dry sumped racing engine, so there's only about a pill bottle full of oil in the engine at a time. The oil sits here and gravity feeds to the engine when it's running, and that's your spirit, which is your fuel. That's your low gas tank. This is Edward Below's insignia. Uh, he made race uh, marine, you know, race, race ships and race boats, and ra made racing cars. So that's his insignia. This is a car club or what is this? A, a car club. This is a European car, so there's several car clubs in Europe you could join. Wow. And they might be also considered to be racing associations. That's a, that's a kerosene lamp, that's just a side marker. And this has got a dog bone in it. So you can open your dog bone and then unthread this and carry your lamp around with your bail handle. Got it. Okay. Uh, Tell this, me what this is. This is a, an original water tank, an original gas tank. There was no gas stations at this time. There's no gas stations for another 15 years. So on your race, you had to take care of yourself. So that was some extra radiator water you were carrying. And this would be your extra fuel that you're carrying. So a beautiful gas tank, beautiful water tank for your spares. Speaking this, of spares, go ahead, tell me about this. This is an original Dunlop cord racing tire. Uh, they don't make those anymore, so I'm proud to have this. This is what they race with in the day. Still has the knobs on it. Yep. If you can see that, it still has the knobs. Wow. Like so. Okay, cool. Okay. Let's blow the bugle. They want to hear that. That's the horn. Very nice. The transmission. Go it's ahead. got a four-speed transmission. <laughs> That's first, second, third, fourth and that's reverse in there. And Great. it's selective. Race car with a four speed. And this is your brake? Yes. Okay, got it. self explanatory We'll get to the interior as we walk our way around. That's the body not, is oh, cast. Why don't oh. you show that? Go ahead. One other thing as well is if I look <laughs> inside the wheel here, you can see that right there. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, go ahead, you're gonna tell me about the body. Okay, the body is cast aluminum. So this body is about a quarter inch thick. One thing you'll notice, that this piece of wood is steam bent. You can see that how the grain follows it. Yeah. So this wow. piece of wood was cast when they cast this body 112 years ago or so. So, it, the, so, so it's, it's not just placed on there. It's, it's inside. inside, and there are no rivets on that. Wow. So uh, about a, you know, in some places it's a quarter inch thick. So Jeez. all of this is aluminum cast, not sheets of aluminum. 
This is a real interesting gas tank. This is for the Voyager at racing. Uh, it was several purposes. The, the first person was, the first purpose was, it was a high gas tank. So it was your gravity feed for 25% grades. Uh, the gas, the, the gas cap is an Edward Below gas cap. That's who designed the car and, and created it for Voiturette Racing. It's a beautiful gas cap. The gas tank itself is made out of one piece of copper, one sheet of copper, and this it's all annealed and, and worked and worked and worked to make an entire tank out of one sheet. Wow. So there's no seam here whatsoever. Let, and, me, let me keep talking, I just want to feature that for a second. And then grab my light. The Go other ahead. end of the gas tank has got a cap on it, but there is no ceiling. See the stretch marks? Wow. And there's no seam on this circumference of it either. There's no seam. But the only seam is the bronze cap on the other end, and they weren't done making the gas tank until it hold, held exactly um, eight liters. So they could keep cutting this shorter and shorter and shorter, then wow. finally soldering on the cap to have a certified gas tank with exactly eight liters. Eight liters or four? Eight? eight. Got it. Eight liters. Wow, okay. All right, I'm gonna have you jump on the other side. I'm gonna jump in this side, although I do want you to feature this. This is for your headlights, correct? That's a carbide generator. So that if you had a, a, a long, really long race that could really generate a lot of carbide, uh, you could really generate a lot of settling for your lamps. Got it. There's another lamp. All right, we have our registration here. We have our, as it says, bell there. Go ahead. There it is. There's our bell, our seat. And we already know where the gas goes in. So let's start with our interior. Go ahead. Why don't we okay. start in the first this was, side? This was a gentleman's race car. So of course it has your cigarette holder and that's sterling silver. And it's got the St. Christopher badge on it too. So you had safety and there's one of your cigarettes. There's your, your, your pencils are on the sides or your pencils and pens. This was the original registration from Delage as you got your car. Um, the one below it is a service center, like a, a blacksmith shop that might do some servicing for you. There's another St. Christopher medal, but this one's got the actual first owner's name and address on it. What? Which is pretty neat. Um, this one up this here, one this here is, probably. is probably the brand of the, not, uh, the fold down windshield. Yep. This is a lap timer. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a, a radio, um, an automotive, automobile Android. So this is basically an altimeter and a barometer. So we're at 2,000 feet, so it's, it's about right right now. Okay, what this is. Right here. Uh, that badge says you need to use Didion Baton racing oil to, uh, to run your car, a high grade of oil back then. Stay right here, what's this big silver box? This silver box is an award. This car won in 1925. Awards back then were, weren't necessarily trophies. It was a useful box for your, for your parts and your pieces. Got it. And tell me and about it's, this it's right solid here. silver. Okay, it, you couldn't buy a Edward Below Racing Delage unless you went, unless you went through the Charles Girat agency. And then once you were qualified by the Charles Girat agency, he would allow you to order a race so car. So he was the dealer? He was the dealer, but it was the Barney Oldfield of Europe, so a high-end dealer. And then right here we've got our oil. And this is a plinket can, so you simply take this the wing nut off, and this plinket can comes off, so you can oil all the points of the car that need separate oiling. Got it. And then this is your dry sump on your oil. So right now all well, the... Well, you got St. Christopher. Don't, don't another St. Christopher. They wanted to have their safety. They actually put these on the cars for your safety. Okay, go ahead. Um, this is your switch that controls your oil for startup and controls your ignition for startup. It's a dry sumped oil car. So right now uh, there's too much oil in the crankcase because there's not enough in our gravity feed sight gauge here. Once we start the engine, this oil level gets up higher and then dumps into the engine by gravity. It's pumped by a pump, and by gravity it goes into the motor. It goes into the motor by gravity, so it won't leak, because they didn't really have any seals. 
Show me what this next one is. This next thing is, this is a Voiturette race car, so they raced closed courses. Closed courses at the time were five or six villages, so they would race to those villages and do several laps. They might do 10 or 15 laps. So the mechanician, every time they would complete a 10 mile lap, would hit that nice. lap timer and put another lap on his lap timer so they knew when they got to 15 laps or 20 laps, whatever the race was. Very cool, okay. This is a tilt meter, uh, so a gradiometer, so you knew that you couldn't climb a hill that's more than four degrees. Uh, you, you needed to be in at least fourth gear or third gear. If it was 20 degrees, you knew you, you would need to know that you're in first gear or second gear, you would have you would have the knowledge for where you are to be in what gear by just looking at the grade of the hill. Got it. Um, this is how you adjust your carburetor. So you could make your carburetor richer and leaner by this control here. This is the clock. We got our lights too. Yeah, right? that's our light switch. Go ahead. That's our clock for the time of day. This is our nice European sp speedometer. I'm gonna just switch hands for a second. The speedometer went to 88 mile an hour. This car will do about 65 at least. Oh, jeez. And then there's the, tr the trip meter, and there's the overall uh, distance meter that the car has on it. And then on the steering column. Well, let's start at the top of the steering column. So tell me right here. Okay, the steering column, this is the hand throttle. Got it. So you can move this and change your hand throttle. Um, you, on the side here? This is your timing. You can move your timing back and forth. Okay. If you happen to be upside down in the race and you couldn't reach the switch on the dash, this is your kill switch so you could nice and conveniently turn your engine off. Yeah, that helps. This is the tachometer. It's directly off the camshaft. So this is spinning back and forth as you're driving down on your race. And your, your pedals, your gas pedal is in the center. You can tell it's gas because it's a smooth pedal. And then your clutch and your brake are the knobby pedals so you wouldn't slip. And this pedal here is just to put your foot on. That's to put your foot on for the driver, for your heel. And this is for your passenger or your riding mechanician to tuck their, their toes underneath so maybe they wouldn't fall out as often. <laughs> as often. <laughs> we'll take a look under the hood. We have to pull the hood off, so we'll take just a second. So this is a, a Delage four-cylinder, two-liter race category engine, all aluminum crankcase. Wow. It's an L-head, so not a real sophisticated design of a, a motor, but it, it was dry sump, so it, it had almost no oil in the engine to cause any friction. To adjust your valves very quickly, these are kind of like Zeus fasteners. You push and turn, you can take this, this polished cover off and adjust your valves. The entire crankcase, is aluminum and it's even polishable. Wow. It's got a centrifugal water pump, which you can see from that side. And the centrifugal water pump is driven by a chain. And then the fan belt, the fan itself is driven by a belt. Let me just show the other side. This is, uh, this is high tech stuff for the day. Even how the wires, notice, go right through where the water's at, that's pretty amazing. You would think they would go around it, not through it. Yeah, no, they go through it. And then one thing interesting, this is the Magneto. It's a racing Magneto. It's a Mia, which is high end. When you adjust the timing, it actually what? throws the, the Magneto back and forth. Throw it the other way for a second. I'm gonna see if I can get that right there. Okay, that's a new one. You've got your patents on this. Well, I think the only thing to do is uh, take it outside and start it up. Let's go for a run. <laughs> Okay, how much uh, danger am I in on this one? Well, uh, I'm not in any, you may be in some. <laughs> Thank you. Notice feet under the, bar the boards. And check out the coolest hood ornament of all time. 
Look at that! Nice! Ah, uh, we'll just meditate on that. Let me show you the gauges. This one up to uh, 65. <laughs> How fast are we gonna go today? Less than All right, good. <laughs> very, very good. Want to make sure we do that. that out of there. We got some time. We're in 1909. Not everything was a racetrack, Alan. <laughs> Sometimes it's okay to go slow. So as he shared with you, this car was the, the full-blown race car. She's sputtering and firing. Back to get the tow of the car. <laughs> it was what it was, right? right yes. Alan, that, that happens in 1909. Yeah. But you know what? Thanks for being on my car store. I had All a right. good time anyway. Thanks, guys.